Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. My name is James David. In today's video, I would like to talk about this particular type of Selingelina and it's commonly known as spike moss. Somehow, I just want to mention that their ID, especially their name, somehow appears to be mixed match with many various names and I would not want to focus so much on a specific type of their names because even this particular one known as Selingelina palana uh, it may also have many variants from this particular genus so i'm very much concerned of the identity where if you were to look at it in a way to see that if if this particular plant that you actually have have similarities hence this will actually will help you to care for this particular plant as you can see here, my method of growing is always unique and experimental. These particular ones are actually grown on a jar of water and I've actually placed a tray on top of it and the Selingelina is actually growing on top of the water jar. And I believe this is one of the factors when I find that it works best, especially when it comes to stable humidity. Because one of the factors here is that I notice is that if it's too wet, these plants don't survive. And if it's too hot, the plants don't survive. Somehow like a uh, type of uh, fern allies, these do require very high humidity and stability in that kind of context. There are also one particular video which I've done in my previous uh, collection you can actually check it out why is my selenium plant dying you can check it out there as i actually covered a lot of other details concerning the most sensitive types over here this particular one and i would like to focus more on the hardy type and this particular one fall in that category so do check out on the details here for more information now just to give a little bit more of the plant characteristics and their details you will find that this particular selenchilina appears to be very much upright and in their growth factor is that most selenchilina are actually appears to be crawling or cascading uh, but this particular one is very much upright and i find that another factor here is that they do put out roots and somehow it appears to be more like a viscous form and a little bit more sturdy kind of uh, firm roots is normally come in pairs at the node factor now the thing here is that also another factor when it comes to selenium they do have more on blue tones or even the red tones and when it have comes with various color in their context but this particular one is very much uniform as one singular color so you can see over here in this plants here that they are very much uniform and they like it that way because if any changes were to take place in a factor where if they are exposed too much to sun they may turn in may have burns on their side or the portion of their leaves and if they're too shaded they may appear to be leggy in most cases may get into a rot factor and easily perish as I mentioned earlier, you can actually see in this portion of a view where the plant is actually growing by the side of the water pond. And I find that also there's a kind of features that you can actually do in the factor where if you will have a, a water fountain, a water feature, something like a jar kind of stuff like that, you can actually place a pot of selenium by the side of it. And I find that clay jars or ceramic seems to be very much conducive and it works very well for these particular types of plants. Here you can notice there's something like a viscous kind of thing. It's actually roots and they normally come in pairs and this is where you can actually use them for propagation. However, it can be very tricky because I have find that in some cases they can perish easily and for a factor where I believe is lack of humidity. So do, con do take note of it that in a factor of propagation, a feel safe factor is to put a medium width underneath the plant and let the root ball actually establish itself with the potting medium. And once it has a sort of like established itself, you can actually trim off the mother plant and you can collect the whole selenium as a separate growing plant of course there are cases where you may not even get that kind of roots there and somehow uh, at sometimes there are some gardeners will say that you actually can just 
get the whole plant as a cutting and again just poke it through through a growing medium and they will establish itself and i find that it does work too but the success rate can be slim and i find that growing these you can actually use a normal regular potting media and also they can also grow on perlite and also with spectrum moss so they they are not fussy plants but also in a way that looking at the condition of humidity lacking which they may not able to survive so this is very much more on a factor where if they don't do well they may not actually thrive however the reverse is also true where if they do well they really do appear to be thriving and very healthy looking i would also suggest to always have spares with syringelina because i find that due to climatic change or weather pattern or maybe if you have a garden where it's exposed to too much rain or too much sun and those stress may cause selenjilina to perish and i find that uh, years of experience i find that when it comes to selenjilina they do very very well as companion plants for apicias and also begonias hence in a way you can actually use that as a kind of a guiding factor where you will know the element of humidity or overwatering or underwatering based on the colors and their growing patterns so other growing factors such as lighting watering and humidity actually goes hand in hand and i find that the element of balance is very much important lacking which let's say you have too much light and it is very bright and lacking of humidity these plants may burn too much water and lacking <laughs> the sunlight and the whole thing just perish and rots away so in a way i find that the balance it's very much works best as i mentioned earlier in your water body but it very much receive at least about three to five hours of uh, bright sunlight maybe morning sun or evening sun somehow works best for this particular selenjelina another factor i noticed that they do not have pest problems so far i've noticed that if they are very much receiving a good and of what is required for their growing and i find that they are actually very much uh, hardy and pest free and finally on the element of feeding normally i use foliar fertilizer and this is a sort of like a medium quality range of course i would really recommend if you can get those which is a highly recommended or high quality ones and the particular one that i use actually use are the orchid fertilizer where it is in a powder form and the npk ratio is quite high and actually will mix it and spray on my whole garden and i find that it works best for begonias aroids and even anthurium so somehow i find that it's gives a, a good regular growth factor for them uh, of course it's a lot to do with experimental like sometimes based on where your location is and the uh, availability of the fertilizers that you can actually get your hands on i will also recommend if you can use growing root hormone or something like seaweed uh, solution because i find that that will actually causes these syringelina to put out vigorous robust roots so that this particular plant will actually able to grow much more stronger and stable in your garden condition uh, this is actually a smaller set of syringelina actually i can say i've accidentally snapped off while handling them and what i've done is that i've just poked it into this uh spagnet moss and checking it and sort of like uh, experimenting on it to see whether they actually survive and somehow i find that they do thrive in this growing condition so one of the tips that i would like to give here is that if in any case that you snapped off the selenjelina uh, do not put them in water unless you have no choice but the element here is that you can immediately poke and propagate them and especially i find that uh, spectrum moss works best uh, also even polite now the factor here is actually the timing if you were to sort of like say you saw uh, these are actually growing by the roadside or abandoned areas and you collected them and kept aside in uh, open kind of uh, 
uh, sort of like you don't have a bag and you just left it in a container and you just brought in, chances for them to perish is very high because these are very sensitive to humidity as I mentioned earlier. So one of the ways you can actually handle it is that get a kind of a container, sort of like the ones that you use for packing food or some kind of those which is transparent plastic containers. What you can do here is put some sphagnum moss and sort of keep that moist first before collection and when you collected the cylindrina, placed it and enclose it sort of like create a kind of a terrarium effect in the measure of after collection while you're traveling back to your garden to look into it so this is very important because uh, when cylindrina stress up it takes a long time for them to recover in most cases they don't and this is one of the things that i find that when it comes to this kind of fern airlines they are sensitive plants there is another factor that I want to mention here is that when you do see this particular plant, this cylindrina starts to rot. In a way, you can see sort of like it turns to mush and, and sort of like very soupy kind of uh, effect, you know, and it's rotting and you can even get a smell from it. Remove those infection immediately. The best way to do it is to take a scissors and trim off or you can carefully pull out the whole thing off and also do keep an eye that don't also use that for compost because chances are those are actually infected with a bacteria that may be dormant in that compost and may affect other plants so do take notice on this that if you were to have something that is rotting especially sensitive plants it's not because the plant is dying natural death but sort of like it's infected by bacteria virus and certain cases where these do not have any uh, remedies for it and so you don't want to introduce new pathogens that may infect your whole garden and actually destroy your collection there is another experiment that i want to try and check and see how, whether these cylindrina do well in the uh, sand mixture and I find that it does it grows well uh, however I've actually kept it in a place where I have not uh, pay attention to it and overlooked the factor that it's actually hidden from my sight and and sort of like they have become leggy and looking for light but somehow the plant did survive and it had a hardy effect on it where it appears to be a little bit leggy but it is alive so in a way i can say that when it comes to this particular type of syringilina they are hardy and able to do very well in many different variate varieties of potting medium i'm actually tempted to trim this and poke back and see whether they can actually grow but i don't want to take the risk i just want to see whether they can actually grow in this kind of conditions where they are kept in a very heavy shade without proper lighting and the growing medium is basically sand and coconut chips uh, somehow it's very draining uh, but it is not so moist as water based one of the tips here that I want to mention here is that this particular one is actually grown with the root ball so that they will be able to establish itself. So this is not grown by cutting. Another tip that I would like to share is that in most cases when someone were to buy a cylindrina from a nursery and it appears to be very healthy looking and you might even find the roots are actually coming out of the pot below and you might be very happy about it but after a certain time maybe like in two to three weeks time or even lesser than that the whole thing start then drying up or even maybe rotting away and this is the telltale sign where i can say that it actually stressed in your growing garden uh, growing condition and the plant is actually dying so how to save this particular issue and one of the things that i will normally do here is that when i purchase them i actually check on the potting medium in most cases i can say 90 percent of it it is actually grown on cocoa peat and i find that it's not a friendly uh, uh, kind of suitable kind of uh, 
growing medium in my garden somehow i find that when cocoa peat dries up they sort of like restrain the water from absorbing and sort of like when you water it you think that you have actually watered heavy but the whole thing just drain out and the plant is actually suffocating so normally what i'll do here is that i will carefully remove off a sort of like shake off the excess cocoa peat and plant them using sphagnum moss or even my own mix of sand coconut chips or even polite so this is actually again goes back to what is works best in your garden and what is successful once you find that it is sort of like fix you can actually find that it works best for every single thing in your garden so these are the things that i want to share to you that if you were to find that a lot of your plants are constantly dying after your purchase from your local nursery one of the things that i have to mention to you here is that start with something that it is hardy and growing very well and in that case that is a successful plant to start as your uh, 0, 0.0 plant i have now come to the end of my video and this is the part that i would really like to ask you for your favor and if you really can i would really appreciate very much that if you can actually subscribe to my channel and this actually helps the youtube algorithm to sort of like select and show the element of traffic that takes place in my channel and this would actually create more awareness for all the other gardeners here who may able one who may want to see more of the detailed information on my garden space and hence when there's a lot of traffic this will actually help to garner more interest in my channel one of the factors that i've actually noticed is through the analyst is that i only find that only two percent of the people here who actually does click like and subscribe to my channel hence i would really like to make a emphasis here for a request and if you really like my video and if you find that my videos and my channel is beneficial and helpful for your gardening experience and you look forward for looking into my garden space i would really appreciate seriously if you can click like and subscribe to my channel and do place in your comments and i will more than happy to entertain and indulge myself in putting in all the queries in according to your questions based on my experience and my knowledge also i would really like to request that you do check out in all your other videos here which is under popular and most viewed and see if at all any plants that actually garner your gardening experience thank you so much for your support and see you again in my next video take care and have a nice day bye